12, verse 9 through 40. Furthermore, we have had a father of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reference, shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirit and live? For they verily, for they chasten us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partake of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemness to be joyous but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of the righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up hands which hang down and the people needs, and make a straight path for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. But let it rather be healed, follow peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Let us pray. O oh, gracious God Almighty, we thank you for getting us through this week. We thank you for your mercy, for your grace, for your love, for your forgiveness. We thank you above all for your son, Jesus Christ, your son, your only begotten son, our Lord and Savior, who willingly and obediently went to the cross. We thank you for the blood that he shed that we can have the forgiveness of sins and be cleansed of all our unrighteousness. Father, we thank you for eternal everlasting life. We thank you also for the stripes that the Lord Jesus Christ took that we could be healed. And we continue to lift up unto you those, Lord, who need your healing. Pastor Jesse, Pastor Ken's mother, Pastor Mike, Homo's name, Deacon Nat, Sister Sidha's mother, Kim Yong-il, Chang Nim, Annabelle, Angie, Sister Pick, Sister Justine's father, Sister Rachel's father, Brother Jed's sister, Sister Daisy's father, Pastor Navid, his wife and mother, Seong Jepsenim's mother, Sister Nanahi, Sister Alicia, Sister Amanda, Sister Wabi Lin's sister and nephew, Brother Max, Brother Calvin, Brother Chris, and Brother Tommy, and by the stripes of Jesus, we pray in agreement for their healing. Pray for John Paul's deliverance as well. Give him your comfort and protection. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the birth of Sister Camille's daughter. And we thank you, Lord. We pray for her healing and your touch. And we pray for a healthy mother and healthy baby as well. And Father, we pray for the missionaries out there who have sacrificed all to serve you, to share your gospel. We pray a special blessing for Itaewon, Kamlin Kiawe, Im Ilu Moksanim, Salmonim, their family. Bless them all, all the leadership there. Thank you, Lord, for their graciousness, for hosting us here, Lord, and we pray, Lord, that you continue to bless that church. Thank you, Lord, that we can be a part of it. Father, we pray for peace for Jerusalem as well. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that your gracious, wonderful God who loves us, Lord. And I pray, Lord, for those here who could not make it in this, in this ministry because of sickness. We pray, Lord, that they too shall be healed by the stripes of Jesus. Pray for marriages, Lord, that there will be understanding, peace between couples, Lord. Peace among the families, parents, children, children, and parents. We pray, Lord, for unity in the families, unity in this ministry. Let us forbear one another. Let us love one another. Let us always trust in you. 
no matter what we are going through in this life, Lord, that we may trust in you. For you said all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And we thank you, Lord, that no matter what the current situation may be, as we trust in you, you will get us through. And Father, it's going to be better because the glory, when we get through it, will be much greater. But not only that, we will grow deeper in our faith in you. And Father, I thank you for each one here. We ask that your angels surround this place and protect it against demonic interferences, disturbances. Father, that we, we may lay aside all the cares, concerns, the burdens of this world and lay them at your feet, at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are God Almighty, and, and we, we invite the presence of your Holy Spirit to fill this place. Let us receive all that you have. I ask for your anointing, your anointing, the anointing of the word to go forth with power. Thank you, Lord. Let us receive all that you have for us here this morning. We love you, we praise you, and to you and to you only. We are so careful to give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. And give the Lord a praise clap for God is good and all the time. Okay, look at someone and say, I love you with the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. And ask, ask them, have you been walking in righteousness unto holiness? Amen. Amen. Hebrews 12, 9 through 14 talks about the discipline of the Lord. And that is the subject, the sub-theme to righteousness and holiness that I want to share with you this morning about the discipline of the Lord. And just as uh, the, the writer wrote, he says that our fathers or our parents some people, grandparents, the, um, when we were growing up, they corrected us. And um, at that time, maybe the, the punishment or whatever discipline they, they administered to us was not good or nice. Um, our Father in Heaven also disciplines us. He also will um, discipline us. You know, the great thing about God's discipline is that although it may not be um, uh, something that is really uh, comforting or anything to, to experience, he knows exactly what measure, where to discipline us in our lives. So when we have this desire to follow the Lord, we want to be holy, we want to walk in righteousness and, and godliness and holiness, there's so many areas, facets of our, of our lives that the heart's desire um, is what he wants. But then we have so many areas in our lives that need to be um, corrected and disciplined. And when you allow him to do it, and it's also a scary thing because when you say, God, I want you to... Um, I want you to perfect me. I want you to, um, I want to seek you. I want to know you. I want to become just like Jesus Christ. Then he will know exactly what you, work you need in your life. Um, your parents may know, may have known some things about your life that they, you needed correcting, but they didn't know every part of your life. Well, God does. He knows everything that we need to be corrected on. But life is not only about correction. Because there's a purpose for God's discipline. There's a purpose for this. And it is not just because uh, it makes him feel good to, to discipline us. That's not it. He has a divine purpose for all of us. And we're going to learn about God's discipline. But needless to say that when we go through God's discipline, it may not feel good. Okay, You may not really what I consider, feel kind of happy about it. But he says the end result is, is, is righteousness unto holiness, okay? So um, 
if you can just receive that in the name of Jesus. And that's why he says, lift up your holy hands. Lift up your hands. Because a lot of times when we go through God's discipline, we um, feel defeated. We feel discouraged. But if you have this in mind, that his end result is for a godly purpose, it's for a good reason, then um, you'll be able to bear it a little bit more. Okay? So uh, it's hard to, to share because... When you're going through it, you, you may not feel happy about it. And you might think, oh, I'm not a Christian and all that. But God, you're going to find out, loves you. And that's why we go through discipline, okay? So let me just share with you some points here. The first one is God desires that we walk continuously in righteousness and holiness by obeying his word. In John 15, 3, Jesus says, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Ephesians 5, 26 and 27 says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. See, God desires that we walk in righteousness unto holiness continuously. And the only way to do that, as he revealed in his word, is by obeying the word of God. So when we don't obey the word of God, then we are, you either obey the word of God or you disobey the word of God. So when you disobey the word of God, you cannot be walking in righteousness and holiness. Very simple, right? Very simplistic. However, comma, um, we are to do this com continuously, continuously. And, and when we don't walk in that manner, then uh, we are not clean. We're only clean when we obey the Word of God. We are washed only by the Word of God. Not by the Word of God where you just put the Word of God over you and then, okay, I'm clean, but it's obeying the Word of God, okay? And this is, this is very easy. So if you just obey the Word of God, then everything is fine. Well, maybe we came here this morning because we haven't all been so obedient to the word of God in including the speaker here okay so it's not like only you and not me right but it's all of us and there, there are things that you know cause us not to obey the word of God don't justify yourself before God don't try to uh, tell him how why you did such and such we need to quickly see that his way is the best way his way, in fact, is the only way. Just like Jesus says, I am the truth, the life, right? I'm the way, the truth, and the life. The way, the truth, the life. No one cometh unto the Father by, but by me. So there's only one way, and that's Jesus' way. If you're going to have a passion for something, you're going to be fanatic about something. Be fanatic about knowing that Jesus is the only way and the word of God is the only way. And once you have that fixed in your hearts, in your mind, and your life, you're on the right path. Okay, and, and don't get me wrong. This is not about, okay, I made a mistake and all of a sudden, boom, the sky falls down and the rocks come down and you start getting burned by the fire of God. Okay, that's not what is, this is about. This is about not knowing sometimes this is about a deliberate, willful disobedience to the Lord. But when you willfully obey the word, and as you get revelation of the word of God, you'll find out there's so many aspects of our life that we haven't been obeying the word of God. One, why? Because we have not known the word of God. It was out of ignorance, right, that we did many things. But as we get more and more knowledge of the word of God, then you become, if you will, more and more complete. Okay, And that's how we get perfected. So we get to know the Word of God, and as obedient children, we obey Him. And that's how we get washed and cleansed by the Word of God. So number two is here. God disciplines children who do not walk in righteousness and holiness through people, and He uses people and sometimes situations. Of course, His Word of God, as we learned. Judges 2.13 and they, they, the people of Israel, forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. 
And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he, de he delivered them into the hands of the spoilers, of spoilers that spoiled them, and he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about, so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. Whithersoever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil, as the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. This is a situation that you don't want to be in, okay? The people of Israel, as you can see briefly, but if you read through the Old Testament, you'll see that they continually uh, would um, veer off and serve other gods. Because if they served other gods, they disobeyed the living Lord God, right? And so God was angry. So God does get angry when we disobey him. Everybody thinks, oh, God loves me and I can do anything. You know, we have freedom, free will. You can choose what you want to do. But God does get angry at sin, okay? He gets angry at sin. And so he got angry at the people of Israel. These are his chosen people. This is his holy nation. This, this is his royal people. These are the people that he called, right? Uh, beginning with Abram. Abram and, and then the generations down, Isaac and um, Jacob and the 12 patriarchs. These are his people. These are his nation. But he got angry at them because they disobeyed God. Similarly, that's the Old Testament, right? That's the people of Israel. Similarly, when we disobey God, he will get angry at us, at the sin, okay? Now, um, unlike when people, the, the 50 men, the captain and the 50 men came against Elisha, the fire burned them up, right? Um, God is merciful, God is gracious, and he's full of grace. So we don't have to, um, you don't have to live in fear, but I'm going to show you what we need to do when we are in this situation. But here we see the people of Israel walking in deliberate sin where they disobeyed God. Um, when you decide to disobey God, you're not going against the church, you're not going against the pastor, you're just going against God. So that is a bad situation to be. Why is it a bad situation? It's because as you can see here, that he sent the spoilers. What happens is, now things in our lives begin to fall apart. Relationships begin to be broken up. Finances begin to be broken up. Uh, things in our lives, things that... Uh, that pertain to us now because the spoilers now are allowed to come in because we have lost this protection. Sickness, disease, these kind of things begin to happen because we have been disobeying God. Not all sickness, not all disease is from the, the spoiler or the enemy, okay? But when you begin to see your life in general begin to fall apart, don't blame the situation. Don't blame your grandparents or something. Maybe it's something in our lives here. Maybe um, we have not been obeying God. So there's a choice here. You can obey or you can disobey, right? Only two choices. Not like, well, I'm going to just wait it out. No, you either obey or disobey. And if we see that our lives begin to fall apart now, because now what he's saying here is, um, the, the hand of the Lord was against the people of Israel. And this was continuously. That is not the situation that you want, you or me would like to be in, okay? We don't want to be in that situation. So the people of Israel, they couldn't figure it out. They couldn't figure out what was going on. But the Bible clearly states, after God had told them numerous times to follow him, to seek him, to obey him, they didn't do it. You might have heard the word of God saying, seek the Lord, follow the Lord, obey the Lord time and time and time again, but you refuse to do it. Then you can see what's happening now in the spiritual world around you. And things begin to fall apart. Things that, um, what is, what's happening here? What's happening? Jeremiah 27.5 Jeremiah writes, I have made the earth, this, well, this is God saying, I have made the earth, the man and the beast that are upon the ground, 
by my great power and by my outstretched arm and have given it unto whom it seemed meet unto me. And now I have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. God calls him my servant. And the beasts of the field have I given him and to serve him. And all nations shall serve him and his son and his son's son until the very time of his land come. And then many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of him. And it shall come to pass that the nation and kingdom which will not serve the same Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. Remember God called him his servant. And that will not, and that will not put their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon. That nation will I punish, saith the Lord, with the sword and with the famine and with the pestilence until I have consumed them by the hand. So we see here, God used King Nebuchadnezzar. And King Nebuchadnezzar was not, uh, not a Jew, not a godly man that's following after the Lord. In fact, if you read, he would build a statue of himself and have the people uh, bow down to him, right? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And then because they did not bow down to him, they were thrown into the fire. But God rescued them. So God can use people. Sometimes we're going to, if we're not obeying the Lord, God will put somebody in your life. A lot of times it's going to be just a king Nebuchadnezzar, somebody who has authority over you. And they might be the meanest person in the whole world. And that's because we haven't been obedient to the Lord. And so we pray that God would remove this person. Don't pray that God will remove the person. You know why? Because he's going to bring in somebody more fierce. So be content with the person that God has put there. And instead, like say, wait, wait a minute. Why? What is going on here? Because sometimes only through authority will God want us to, uh, that's the only way we learn obedience, okay? Through uh, fierce authority. Um, if, if you have a, um, you know, if you have someone say, oh, okay, all right, okay, just do anything you want. Come in anytime you want to work. It's okay. Oh, you want to leave? Okay, you can leave early anytime. Oh, good, 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 good. We don't learn obedience, right? But sometimes we got people that they are going to make us dig the, the deepest foxhole, you know, the hot sun. And it's going to be sweaty and, and all these um, insects and bugs, and it's going to be a hard time. And then um, you're finished. And the next day you do, you, you do something else. You're going to dig another foxhole, right? And, oh, this is a mean boss. But you know what? Um, God places authorities over us for a purpose. And that purpose may be because we haven't um, got all this disobedience out of us. And so he'll put that person there, persons or whatever, so that we can learn that, you know what? I'm not going to fight the system here. I need to obey God. What's in the natural, now we can change into the spiritual. So instead of trying to change your environment, be sensitive to what God is doing to you, why he has placed these people, why these things are happening, situations, right? We talked earlier. It might be falling apart. And then on top of that, you get a bad uh, dealings with people. And it seems like they have no mercy. And it's because God wants us to, to be obedient because we have been disobedient to his word. Amen? You know, I, I remember talking to many people, several people. And it seems like every time they get a new job, they got a bad boss. That boss is just bad. So I guess all of you guys, when you become supervisors, you are all bad. Amen? Any boss is bad. Yes? Th that's the way it sounds. Like every single boss or supervisor is bad. So you guys are bad because as you get promoted, you are bad people. Are you bad? No, of course not, right? There's a purpose for all of this. So we need to squint 
and find out why these things are happening, maybe he w this is the only way that we can learn submission. Amen? Okay. So, number three, believe it or not, God disciplines those he loves. So look at somebody next to you and say, God loves you. Somebody going through God's discipline now, tears are coming out. How can God love me? How can he allow this discipline to ha happen to me? <laughs> Proverbs 13, 24 says, He that spirit the rod hated his son. But he that loved him, say, he that loved him, okay, chasing at him be times. So we look at this in the natural where a father, you know, supposed to do the bang bang, right? You know, discipline their son or daughter, whatever, the children, right? But in the spiritual sense, God um, loves us, and that's why he disciplines us. Similarly, in Hebrews 12, 5 through 8, the writer writes, And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and he scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God delivereth you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. So, as children of God, God loves us, and God desires that we walk in righteousness and holiness. And when we don't, then we are um, subject unto to His discipline. We ought to have this um, frame of mind here that in all ways um, we're maybe not there where we're walking in every aspect thinking or uh, every thought that we have is not all righteousness and holiness and there are areas that God wants to um, he wants to work on so we, if we have this humble mind uh, a mind of humility that you know what I'm still a work in progress in Korean, they say, Kong Sa Jung. You know Kong Sa Jung? Under construction. So if you have this attitude that you are still under construction and you're not there yet, even though you might be a mature person, but spiritually, there's a lot of work that God needs to do in us yet, then we will be able to um, um, be able to prepared to receive his discipline. Now, we don't walk around waiting for the rock to fall upon us and, you know, that, that kind of fear. We will serve him. And God will pick, he will determine what areas they are, and he will discipline us. And yes, you know, if you're a parent, you thought, okay, as a parent, uh, I'm all right and my children are wrong and all that. That's not um, the attitude that we ought to have when we face the Lord Jesus Christ and um, the Son and through his Father. His Father, Father God, is going to discipline us because he loves us. He loves us and he's merciful. But um, again, he will give us the right amount of uh, discipline, no more, no less than we need. Um, for those who need strong severe discipline it might be a function of how proud we are how um, hardened we have been and so um, some people get it different than others so don't look at other people even other be believers Christians and because they're going through a hard time it might be the discipline of the Lord okay don't look down at them because God knows what you need as well. He, needs ex he knows exactly what you need at, at what exact measure 
and exact duration and all that. Okay, so this is how we can get back on track with the Lord. Okay, everything has been gloomy, sad, oh, wow, scared, and not too good. This is how we get back on track with the Lord. God's discipline, there's a purpose, is going to lead you to repentance, to repentance, and then subsequently to righteousness and holiness. In 2 Corinthians 2, 5, and let me preface this here. Um, the scholars believe that, um, that Paul is following up on a previous letter in, the, in 1 Corinthians where there was a, a member in the church that had been um, deliberately, willfully um, uh, committing a um, egregious sin. Okay, he was, he was living in sin and it was causing um, like yeast in the bread to spread throughout the, the body of Jesus Christ. So, to, so Paul told him to, in, the, in 1 Corinthians, that you turn him over to Satan. Let Satan buffet him so that his spirit, his soul could be saved. Okay? And, um, but he, so he continued to live in this, this kind of sin that even the, the Gentiles didn't live in. But the, he's a, this guy's supposed to be a Christian. He lived in that kind of sin. So Paul says, kick him out, basically kick him out of the church and let Satan deal with him so that maybe he can um, be saved, okay? Or he can turn to the Lord. So now I read in 2 Corinthians 2, 5, where he's going to follow up. And we're going to see something happen to this guy that was kicked out of the church. But if any have caused grief, which that, which that man did. He had not grieved me, but in part that I may not overcharge you all. So sufficient to such a man is this punishment which was inflicted of many. Okay, so he received a lot of punishment. He received a lot of people um, not cursing him, but, you know, just, just, um, just um, talking sternly to him, tell him how, how evil he was living, and they ostracized him, okay? So he said, sufficient to such a man is this punishment which was inflicted of many. So that contrary wise, ye ought rather, rather to forgive him and comfort him, lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with over much sorrow. Wherefore, I beseech you that you should, would confirm your love toward him. For to this end also did I write that I may know, might know the proof of you, whether, whether you be obedient in all things. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgive, forgave anything to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So what happens is, once this man was kicked out of the, the church, and people said, um, you shouldn't be living this kind of wicked lifestyle and evil, evilness, he is evidently is going to repent. He's going to repent of his sins. He's going to turn away from the sin that he's been living uh, in. And um, Paul is telling him, okay, you know what? Back off the dogs. Back, back off this, um, this, 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 um, this uh, accusations against him. The, the man repented. He repented. So now forgive him and then welcome him back into the church. So we see here that the first step in getting right with the Lord, if we have been walking in disobedience, is to repent. Repentance means where you truly admit, God, I have sinned against you. I have been walking in disobedience. I have not been following your word. I am truly sorry. This begins not an intellectual kind of repentance, but a heartfelt repentance that you realize you were wrong and that God's way is right and you turn from that way. No matter what the sin was, no matter how serious you think the sin was, the blood of Jesus is more powerful than any sin that you have committed, okay? And so once you come to, come to true repentance, he will forgive you. And by the blood of Jesus, he will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So this man had repented. And, and God, Paul is writing that we ought to forgive him too. God forgives us, okay, immediately. So the way to get back 
to the Lord is the first step is through repentance of the way we have been living our lives. And God will welcome us back. But then we, now we need to begin to walk this life which we knew intellectually, but we didn't do. But we walk in righteousness and holiness, okay? So that's how, that is how we can turn from our situation, how you can turn the tide. Once you repent, then all these spoilers and these things around us now, they cannot attack you. They can attack you, but then you have God's protection, okay? You have God's presence, and we need God, who is our defender, our shield, our strong tower, and that's why the righteous run into it, right? We need him, but we cannot get there until we repent, and we ask for forgiveness, and then God now is going to be the defender and protector. Then we choose now to walk in righteousness and holiness. So wherever you're at now in your life, you can begin to turn your life, to begin to walk in righteousness and holiness. Because one, more than the enemies of this world coming against us, if God is not there to protect you, you have no protection, okay? You have no protection. But the only way to get this protection from God is through repentance, and then we walk in righteousness and holiness. And th that's the theme we've been talking about the last couple of weeks. And people are stubborn, right? They don't want to repent because they like their lifestyle. Know this, that you continue in your lifestyle, disobeying him, you're going to be subject to the things of the spirit world. That the wall is down. The people of Jericho were protected, right? But once the wall went down, then the people of Israel could go right into Jericho and they could destroy all of Jericho. Some of us have our walls down. They're crumbling or they've been destroyed. And so it's Sorrow upon sorrow, calamity upon calamity, distress upon distress, all of that. There's a spiritual aspect to this. Not only a physical aspect, but the way to get back, that wall, where God will put the wall up, is to turn to him. So we can start afresh. This is the new part about it. This is about the, 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 the hope that we can have in the Lord Jesus Christ. But it's not only about repenting and saying, I'm going to walk in righteousness and holiness. But there's, there's this ultimate purpose that God has. And that is God disciplines us so that we will turn. We repent, walk in righteousness and holiness. And then what? He disciplines us so we can bear fruit in righteousness and holiness. The ultimate purpose of God's discipline is that we will bear godly fruit unto him. In Romans eleven sixteen, 16, uh, the Apostle Paul writes, For if the first fruit be holy, and he's talking about Israel, we understand that, but look at this spiritually as well. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy, and if the root be holy, so are the branches. So when we repent, when we allow and ask God to wash us by the blood of Jesus, then now we can start anew. And sometimes he's going to uproot. Sometimes he's going to destroy everything in our lives. And, and, and he's going to uproot, pull that. That's the bloody part. That's the painful part. Okay? But when he pulls it out, now he can now put in the holy root based on the word of God. And we can have holy branches which lead to holy fruit. As Jesus says in John 15, 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask whatever, what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, and God wants, he wants to be glorified, that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. So we are here to bear much fruit. Okay? Not just to live 
a righteous and holy life. That's not the end state. The end state is while we are here on earth, we are here to bear uh, godly fruit. And not only just a fruit, but fruit, a lot. Okay? And that's the ultimate purpose. So we see here that there's a purpose for God's discipline. Just living a righteous, holy life is not the end state. That's not the end. But then to go further and to be able to share and bear fruit for the Lord. So I pray that um, you know where you're at. Or the Holy Spirit can tell you where you're at in your walk with the Lord. And then the Bible says this. You will know them by their fruit. So if you have been bearing godly fruit unto the Lord then you can back up and see all the way to I have been obeying God. When you obey the word of God, it leads to righteousness, holiness, and it leads to ultimately bearing godly fruit. Amen? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that it's more of you, Lord. It's about you. It's about your word that we need to be obedient unto your word. And Father, I thank you that you're God of many chances, Lord, and that let us not tempt you by living a life that is not pleasing to you, but we would right now, at this moment, realize, Lord, that we need to repent. Father, I pray, Lord, that now that people will begin to walk in righteousness and holiness and then ultimately bear fruit for you godly fruit that you may be glorified and father for those whose world around them seems to be crumbling just as the walls of Jericho is crumbling around them around Jericho father that father they will see there's a reason maybe for the walls crumbling reason and, and then we can see that lord we have it lord to make that decision to follow you. May we know you, Lord. May we trust in you. May we know that you are gracious, wonderful, loving God, that we can put no other faith in any, any other person, any person, anything, but only in you. Because you have the best interests for us. Even though we think we know what is our best interest, you know what is our best interest. And Father, we want to live for you just as the Lord Jesus Christ gave up his life for us. We give our lives unto you. And Father, we want to be that living sacrifice that is walking in righteousness and holiness and bearing much fruit. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this change, this hope, Lord, that we can look forward, Lord, to greater things, a new dimension, a deeper walk with you a deeper dimension in you father you are so gracious so loving so merciful we thank you lord and then when we when we walk in righteousness and holiness not only do we bear fruit but father we have the love the joy and the peace for those that seem to those things have the fruit that may have been have escaped them lord Father, we do pray for love, joy, peace. We do pray for more of your presence in our lives. Draw near to us, Lord, as we humble ourselves unto you, as we walk in repentance, in deep, true repentance, washed by the blood of Jesus, cleanse of all unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord, we praise you. We thank you, Lord, we can start afresh, start new again. We love you, Lord, and praise you. We give you all the glory, all the honor. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.